Hello, hello everyone and once again we're back and uh, this time we are going to be looking at some more examples on the nature of roots. So if you haven't subscribed, please just do the right thing and uh, you know, just click that subscribe button. And of course, um, you can always reach us. Our email is info at mlungesinkosi.co.za. Uh, we've got our value added services that you can um, apply for. Right. And of course, on social media at underscore Mlungesinkosi on Instagram, as well as uh, Facebook, Mlungesinkosi ZA. Right. Now we're continuing on the nature of roots. Right. So we are looking in this case at uh, this example that I want us to just quickly just delve into. Right. So they say find K if X squared minus KX plus k plus 3 is equal to 0, has equal roots, right? Please remember, what do we know about equal roots, ladies and gents? We said when the nature of roots is equal, it's when the discriminant is equal to 0, right? So what we need to do, first of all, is find out what is our value for the discriminant. What is our a value? Okay. Uh, so I'm busy with the solution now. So what is our A value in this case? So our A value is 1. What's our B value? Our B value is negative K. And our C value is K plus 3. You must remember to always put it in standard quadratic form, right? AX squared plus BX plus C so that you can be able to identify the value of a, b, and c. So our a value is the coefficient of x squared, our b value is the coefficient of the x term, and our c value is um, the constant term. Right, so let's work out the value of delta. Delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac, our b value, that's negative k squared, Minus 4 times A is 1, and C is K plus 3, right? So we've got K squared minus 4 times 1, that would be 4, into K plus 3. I'm sure uh, some of you are already seeing the answer there. So that's K squared minus 4K minus 12. Okay, now remember when we talk about equal roots, we say in this case for equal roots, the value delta has to be equal to zero. So for equal roots, we know that delta is equal to zero. So we know it means in that case k squared minus 4k minus 12 is equal to 0. Okay, we can factorize there. Factors of 12 such that when I subtract them, uh, will give me 4, right? So that would be um, 6 and 2. So that's k, k there. That's 6 and 2. And of course, in this case, when we've got a negative in front of the constant term, all it simply means is that the signs inside the brackets are not the same, right? So the bigger product will take the sign of the middle term. So we've got 6k and we've got 2k, right? So which one will be negative? It means our 6k will be negative. So there it is there. And 2 over there. Okay, so what can we say? The value of k is equal to 6. Or k is equal to negative 2, right? Now, if you wanted to find those roots, uh, what they actually are, uh, you can do so, right? All you would need to do is just substitute that. Uh, back into that original equation because you've got uh, either one of your k values, right? Um, so 
I want us to uh, just take another example here. Uh, right, so um, let's take the next example. So they say to us, we've got ax squared plus bx, which is equal to bx squared plus a. Right, so they want us, uh, what can you say about the roots of the above equation? So what we need to do, first of all, ladies and gents, is to try and put this in a, a, as a, in a standard quadratic form. So I'm going to group all my x squared terms together, my x terms together, as well as my uh, constant terms, right? The ones without the x. So I see I've got uh, ax squared. I'm going to take the bx squared to the other side. So that would be minus bx squared. Okay, I'm going to keep that bx there, right? And of course, that becomes minus a is equal to zero. Now, if we take out the common factor, which is x squared there, we'll be left with a minus b times x squared, right? Plus bx minus a. Okay, so in this case, let's find the nature of roots. So we're going to say delta is b squared minus 4ac. So what is our a value? It's going to be a minus b. Our b value is b and our c value is a. So that's going to be b squared, right? So there's our b value there, coefficient of the x term, minus 4 times our a value is a minus b and our c value is negative a, right? So we're going to have b squared minus, so if we multiply throughout there, in fact, let's take, let's multiply the 4 times the uh, uh, negative 4 times negative a, that will give us positive 4a into a minus b right so we've got b squared plus 4a squared minus 4ab okay right so this is multiplying inside there 4a times a will give us 4a squared 4a times negative b will give us negative 4ab right so that's the discriminant now I want you to note something there. What can we say about that discriminant, right? I can see that, um, you know, um, we can actually just try to factorize this somehow if we go a little bit further. So that's 4ab plus 4a squared. So what is this? It's going to be b minus 2a all squared okay so if we're taking we're factorizing here so that will be b minus 2a and that will be all squared now what does that mean right so it means that the roots in this case will always be positive so delta will always be positive because remember we're squaring what is on the inside so whether what's on the inside is positive or negative but the fact of the matter is delta is, in this case, going to be positive. So I know that roots in this particular case will be positive, right? So, um, okay, yeah, there's my phone there uh, ringing, okay? So in this case, I know that the roots will definitely be positive. So that means that um, my roots will be real so roots are real okay but in this case now that we know that we've got real roots right are they going to be um you know rational or irrational equal or unequal in this case we can't really say much about the rationality of the uh, um, roots but what we can do is we can comment as to whether uh, you know, uh, they can be, uh, you know, uh, rational, right? Um, so in this case, how can they be a perfect square, right? So 
if I find that the value of B is equal to 2A, in fact, I wanted to say equal, right? If the value of B is equal to 2A, what happens? It means that my delta will be equal to 0, right? So, uh, if B is equal to 2A, so remember, why would that be? Because if that's 2A, then it will be 2A minus 2A, and uh, obviously that will be 0 squared. So, in that case, if B is equal to 2A, uh, roots are irrational. I mean, uh, roots are equal. Okay. But if B is not equal to 2A, then my roots are going to be unequal. All right? So I hope that kind of makes sense, ladies and gents. Sometimes... We have to work with, uh, and of course, I'll be taking some more examples on this as I do past exam question papers, right? Uh, but you must keep in mind, you must know that when delta is zero, we know that in this case, uh, uh, roots would be equal. When delta is greater than uh, zero, we know that we've got um, real roots in this case. And of course, when it's less than zero, uh, we know we've, we're going to have uh, uh, imaginary roots or non-real roots okay right ladies and gents i want to keep it here for now uh, we're going to look at some more examples as we do past exam question papers next time otherwise from me your favorite uncle i'll see you next time sharp sharp